This is KGEI, General Electric Station, San Francisco, California. We bring you at this time, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, the summary edition of the daily news compiled from the complete reports of the International News Service. Reichsführer Adolf Hitler decided today to let German guns and planes tell in their own deafening way the story of what were termed continued smashing victories over the gigantic Russian army. Unexpectedly, he postponed a much promised statement describing in full detail where and how and to what extent the Soviet army and air force are crumbling beneath the hammer blows of the German military pile driver. Military observers immediately speculated as to whether this postponement indicated the German spokesmen were over-optimistic in their original claims that Russia would prove a walkover. The incident served to highlight the latest war communique issued in Moscow, which claimed that Nazi spearhead units had been pocketed in Lithuania and repulsed or destroyed in the south and central sectors. In Berlin, however, there was no lack of confidence. There was, on the other hand, a tendency to say that German victories were piling on one another in such rapid succession that it was difficult to keep track of them. Specifically, Wilhelm Strauss' spokesman told of a successful air attack on a Soviet staff headquarters, destruction of an armored column almost a mile long, and crippling blows to the Red Air Force. And in the meantime, bombs from the air found targets old and new. The Finnish port of Turku, or Abu, which was almost wrecked in the Russo-Finnish war of last year. This was today again bombed, and once again the Finnish sky was red with flames. Another detachment of Soviet planes bombed the once gay city of Bucharest, caused casualties and undisclosed damage in the heart of what was once the Towers of the Balkans, to show that the Russian offensive is merely one chapter in an ever-expanding volume of war and destruction, the German Admiralty made known that the pocket battleship, the Admiral Scheer, sister ship of the conquered and scuttled Graf's Bay, has made a new name for herself as a raider in the North Atlantic. No less than 152,000 tons of enemy shipping sank beneath her guns in her latest raiding mission that was announced earlier, while other German ships and Luftwaffe planes accounted for 97,300 tons. But a later report, one also from Berlin, the German pocket battleship, the Admiral Scheer, sister ship of the old fated Graf Spee, has returned to port today after a raiding mission in the North Atlantic during which she sank 152,000 tons, the German high command has announced. Somewhat conflicting reports came from Africa and the Near East. Cairo said the British made new gains at Tobruk and were smashing away in Syria with big land and naval guns, but Vichy said the British offensive was slowing down. Meanwhile, the Royal Air Force went ahead with its attempt to divert the Germans from Russia with a new series of raids on the Nazi-held French coast after night attacks in which Bremen, Kiel, and Boulogne were again showered with bombs. And while both the Germans and the Russians claimed success in their mighty conflict, the American government moved cautiously today in the matter of supporting the USSR. A dispatch from Washington said American aid to the Soviets, for the present, will be chiefly in the form of moral support to encourage the people of Russia to keep on resisting. The United States government was described as seeking all reasonable ways and means of bolstering Russian morale, but was not prepared to turn over important defense materials to the Soviets until their determination to fight to the utmost has been conclusively proved. While the government made its plans, House non-interventionists planned a twofold move to minimize po possible transportation of important war supplies from the United States to Russia. The contemplated action embraced, one, a congressional act proclaiming absolute opposition to such shipments, Moscow, however, said the main German drive against the Ukraine has been halted and the chief Russian defense on the eastern bank of the Pruth River is holding up against terrific German and Romanian pressure. Seventy-six German planes were declared to have been shot down yesterday while Red Air Force losses were put at 17 machines. Their answer to America, then, is that they are holding on. On Tokyo, 
The government was still wondering what Japan should do about the Russo-German conflict. The cabinet and the high command held another joint meeting to consider important questions confronting Japan. London fighter planes maintained their continuous and wide patrol of the channel and the invasion coast. Berlin said Stuka dive bomber sank a British heavy cruiser, a light cruiser, and a tanker at the Libyan port of Tobruk on Tuesday. And the German high command also announced German submarines had sunk eight merchant, in, merchant ships totaling 48,000 tons in the North Atlantic. They admitted the British had sunk one of their ships in the Indian Ocean. Stockholm, Sweden, beset by Nazi pressure, has agreed to let some 15,000 German troops cross their soil from Norway en route to strike the Russians through Finland. What place it will put Sweden has not been determined. Nine more enemy fighting planes have been destroyed in battles during the sweep across the channel, while three British craft have been lost in the last reports of fighting today. Today's communique by the German High Command dealt mainly with operations in other theaters. Regarding Russia, it merely said, operation of land, air, and naval forces continued according to plan of the Eastern Front. Grand-scale operative successes were gained after successful initial border battles. And now, and still another theater, a report from Rome, two British pursuit planes were shot down last night in an Italian bombing raid on the island of Malta, the Italian High Command communique has stated. In the central Mediterranean, Italian pursuit planes intercepted the British bombing squadron and they shot down one Bristol Blenheim bomber. In North Africa, Axis planes attacked British vessels north of Marsaluch and to the east of Tobruk. The communique made no mention of the damage inflicted. In East Africa, the British made two mass attacks on the garrison at Debra Tabor. The Italians say that these attacks were repulsed. Writing in the authoritative Giornale d'Italia, Admiral Gino Ducci of the Italian Navy today called for immediate Japanese entry into the war. Why wait, he asked. War bulletins, briefs that have been received, Announcement in London was made today that a Dutch submarine on patrol duty sank an enemy tanker of 7,000 tons and a supply ship of 500 tons. In Berlin, the German government announced today that the Nazi army is not fighting the people of Russia. The war which Germany is waging against the Soviet, a Wilhelm Strauss spokesman said in the usual tone, is not one against the peoples of Russia, but a fight against the Soviet government system and Bolshevism as a government creed. Berlin, 15 Russian transport trains loaded with troops and mechanized equipment were wrecked today by German Stuka bombers near an unnamed railroad station, Berlin has announced. From Cairo, further substantial penetration of the outer defenses of Tobruk held by German and Italian forces were announced by the Middle East High Command today. In Syria, west of Damascus, British troops are facing increased resistance, but they made substantial gains in the Merjayum sector. British artillery, backed by naval guns, is now bombarding the defense of Demor. And in Washington, D.C., President Roosevelt today prepared to lead all Americans in unison, 130 million strong, in a national unity celebration of the 4th of July, highlighting it with an address calling for more speed and sacrifices for the defense program. Meanwhile, he will implement the forthcoming appeal for faster production of munitions by signing an executive order giving the OPM's priorities division legal power to back up its decision. The executive order will give priorities director Edward R. Stentinius, Jr. full power to establish priorities for all defense needs it also will delegate to Federal Price Control Administrator Leon Henderson the power to allocate the materials left over to the many industries producing civilian goods. The stock market, the following current quotations are brought to you through the courtesy of Merrill Lynch, E.A. Pierce and Cassatt, San Francisco, California, and members of the New York Stock Exchange and other leading stock and commodity exchanges.
Alice Chalmers, 28 and one half. American Can has had no sales. American Car and Foundry, 32. American Locomotive, 13 and three quarters. American Rolling Mills, 14 and one quarter. American Smelting, 42 and one quarter. American Telephone and Telegraph, 156 and three eighths. Anaconda Copper, 27 and three eighths. Baldwin Locomotive Certificates, 15 and one eighth. Bethlehem Steel, 73 and 7 eighths. Boeing Aircraft, 17. Borg Warner, 17 and 3 eighths. Caterpillar Tractor, 47 and 3 quarters. Chrysler, 57 and 1 half. Crown Zellerback, 12 and 5 eighths. Curtis Wright, 9. Douglas Aircraft, 73 and 3 quarters. DuPont, 155. Freeport Sulphur, no sales. General Electric, 32 and 5 eighths, that's ex-dividend. General Motors, 38 and 5 eighths. Goodrich Rubber, 13 and 1 quarter. Goodyear Rubber has had no sales. Inland Steel, 73 and 3 quarters. International Nickel, 25 and 3 quarters. Kennecott Copper, 37 and 1 quarter. Matheson Alkali, 29. National Biscuit, 16 and 1 half. Newmont Mining, 29. New York Central, 12 and 1 half. North American Aviation, 14 and 3 eighths. Pennsylvania Railroad, 23 and 5 eighths. Public Service of New Jersey, 21 and 3 eighths. Radio Corporation, 4. Rayonier Incorporated, no sales. Republic Steel, 19 and 3 eighths. Sears Roebuck, 72 and 1 half. Shell Union Oil, 14 and 1 half. Coney Vacuum Oil, 9 and 1 eighth. Standard Oil of California, 21 and 1 half. Standard Oil of New Jersey, 40 and 1 eighth. United Fruit, no sales. United States Rubber, 23. United States Steel, 57. Woolworth, 29 and 1 quarter. Sales, up to the present time, total sales, 250,000 shares. And the Dow Jones averages, Industrials are up 24 cents, 123.76. Rails are up 6 cents, the average there, 28.56. On the New York Curb Exchange, Aluminum Company of America has had no sales. Eagle Pitcher Lead, 8 and 5 eighths. Electric Bond and Share, no sales. Gulf Oil Corporation, 34. Pantapec Oil of Venezuela, 3 and 5 eighths. Commodity quotations, wheat. 104 and 3 eighths, July that is, up one and one half. Corn, unchanged with July 73 and three quarters. Cotton, July 1465 or up 18. July copper, 1190, unchanged. Rubber, 2125 or up 25. Number three sugar, 256, up one. Number four sugar, 102, unchanged. Sterling at New York, 403 and one quarter. Domestic copper, 12. Lead, 585. London silver, 23 and 7 sixteenths pence. Zinc, 764 and tin, 53. News from countries at war is censored at its source and likely contains propaganda. This news has come to you from the complete reports of the International News Service. Norman Page speaking. This is KGEI. General Electric Station, San Francisco. At this time, 14 minutes after 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, KGEI is signing off the air. KGEI, General Electric, International Broadcasting Station, has today been operating on a frequency of 9,530 kilocycles, or 31.02 meters, and by authority of the Federal Communications Commission of the United States of America. We'll return to the air at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, then on a frequency of 15,330 kilocycles in a program directed primarily to Mexico, Latin, and South America. At 9.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, KGEI again operates on the 9,530 kilocycle beam directed to you folks all over the world. We are very anxious to hear from you concerning our broadcasts. 
Will you kindly write to us, giving any information you will, to KGEI, San Francisco, California. Thank you. Your announcer is Norman Page. The engineer in charge of the transmitter is Winton Teal. Ladies and gentlemen, until we meet again, our national anthem. Thank you.